Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be planting up our very first spring containers for outside underneath our balcony. So this little portico area. Here's the situation. I still have Christmas lights <laughs> in these. Please tell me I'm not alone. Brown, greens, and Christmas lights. We've got to clean these window boxes out and get some fresh spring color in them. I'd also like to plant around the base of these boxwoods. You can see that we did uh, refresh our wreaths. So I took the Christmas ones down and put these new preserved boxwood wreaths up and I really love them. I think they're really bright and fresh, but the rest of the area is not. Got to figure out the pillow situation too. We had a super windy weekend and everything was on the floor this morning. I had a cookie. You had a cookie? What kind? A chocolate chip cookie. Ooh, did daddy bring it for you? Good. You want to come help me plant? Yes, I'm just going to get my socks and feet. Okay. I am going to be using these bunny pillows that I picked up on a shopping trip that Erin and I recently took, but I've got to get the snowflake ones put away and make it look a little bit more springy up here. So I think I have enough plants to fill up the containers here, plus the kitchen window box, possibly the rest of the window boxes. I'm just not sure how far we'll actually get with the project today. My goal is just to get these four tackled and get some new pillows out here and that sort of thing. I'll show you the other window boxes. It's a beautiful day. It's really sunny and only lightly breezy. We're coming off of two really windy days, so it's just lovely. South side of the house, these two window boxes, and then there's a small one right up there that has perennials in it. it needs to be cleaned up also while we're here you can see we did remove the euonymus that was right here i'm going to do something really fun and pretty up against this wall and create like a little secret little nook back here because these plants fill in to where you can't see back here i think it'll be nice yeah this needs some serious help right here had some begonias in here as well just needs a clean up what is going on over here russell what are you doing yeah, and that's why I don't like you getting on my bed. Look at this. Dirty. And you know, at one time, I do think I mentioned we might be removing the window boxes, which I think is still the eventual plan. We're just not quite there yet. We have nine window boxes right now, which takes a lot. You know, it's more to water. It's more plants to switch out for seasons if you're going to try to do multiple seasons. I don't always plant them out for spring, but it's been so nice and I'm so anxious to plant things that I'm going to do it this year. Uh, but I think it would be nice to go from nine down to three, leaving the kitchen window box and then these two right here on this side of the house. And then maybe one day we'll have that wraparound porch that we want. That's the reason why we were going to take them down so that we'd have a little bit more depth and not have window boxes in the way. Anyway, we're not there yet. We have too many other things going on. We just need to go gather up some things, my gloves, a kangaroo bag to put all of the extra soil and, and the plants that we need to clear out and our plants. Are you out here to help me plant window boxes? No, I'm going to spread some iron. Do you need help? No. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I just iron. thought you might enjoy planting flowers rather than spreading iron. No. I I don't make me happy to spread the iron actually. We're because gonna have, of all the issues we had. Well we'll have a better handle on it this year. One tumbleweed in that bag. <laughs> so exciting. So the reason I'm starting with the containers right next to the house is because we do have a week full of fairly chilly temperatures at night. Most of them are hovering around freezing, but we do have a couple that are going down into the 20s. So on those nights, I'll probably grab some harvest guard material and just drape it over them, which I typically have to do with a few containers every spring because I'm usually a little bit early. But since they're so close to the house, they'll just be more protected naturally. These plants are all real cold tolerant, so we should be good. Nope, those are gonna stay in here. This is another heavy one, dude. Can you manage that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Good job. I so much. You are so strong. Okay, that's it from the greenhouse. Now we have to go to the back of the truck. We got more back there. Good job. Okay. Okay, I think that's it, dude. That's all we can fit all we can fit in there. Ooh, you did it. Look at that. Good job. 
Okay, so we're working on clean out first. Benjamin is taking all the pine cones out from around the boxwoods and placing them gently in a pile. Look, I found different yeah. pine cones. Uh huh. It's like stallions, like dirt on there. Yeah, and I am going to clean out these window boxes. So let's get that done. Okay, window boxes have been cleaned out. We still have a few pine cones left. I lost Benjamin's attention as soon as the Christmas lights came out of the window boxes. <laughs> he wanted to play with those. But I've been just kind of working on messing with uh, layout here. Not all of the plants are in bloom. Like I've got these daffodils. They're the spring sunshine variety. And you can see that they're all budded up. So that will provide some really nice yellow. And I'm not sure exactly how these are going to end up. I might not use hellebores. These are the Glenda's gloss. They're really pretty and they add some height. I'm just not sure. This is Woodwardia, a giant chain fern right here. These get really big in the landscape. Yeah, four to six feet tall. They're only hardy to 10 though. So they're ones that I'll probably keep in containers and move them into the greenhouse when we're done with them in here. We've got saxifrage, early lime, lavender, pansies, or just a really an assortment of violas and pansies, and then yellow ranunculus. Sometimes I like to have a tall element in window boxes, and sometimes I like them to just be fairly low, not obstructing the view at all from inside. So I'm just not really sure how these are gonna come together. I'm just gonna mess with it, and then we will take a tour in the end. And around the boxwoods, I just plan on putting pansies. Okay, these are done. I love how they turned out so bright and fresh. I went without the hellebores this time because I felt like they made the whole arrangement look a little bit messy and they didn't have super bright blooms. So I think maybe something with a brighter white bloom would have looked better or maybe a deeper red. Uh, so I went with the ferns, there are five of them and then four bunches of daffodils in between each fern, I just alternated. So those daffodils, they'll grow 10 to 12 inches tall. So we'll have nice bright yellow blooms hanging out above there here pretty soon. And then I alternated between yellow ranunculus and then violas or pansies and dusty miller, which I forgot I had this in the gator and I absolutely love the break that that allowed, both in color and texture. It brought contrast. I just think it's so pretty. And all of these things will get bigger. So I did pack it quite full, which is okay for spring planters, but by the end, this will look like the biggest puff of color, just wait for it. It's gonna probably be hard to dismantle this for summer plants. Then I have to show you the view from this side because as you look this way, you can see the Hartley in the back and a sweet little dude. Hey bud, are you fixing the engine and the gator? Well, I fixed the gator, but what should I fix this? You should fix all the tires on the gator. Well, well, well I fixed the rocks. You fixed the rocks? Well, the tires need to be fixed. You need to check them all, make sure they're all pumped up. Oh, well, they're all pumped up? Yeah, you gotta go look. I love that view. Look at that. Especially once that grass greens up a bit. In these pots right here, which the boxwoods desperately need their new spring growth, we've got a little bit of winter damage. They'll be fine, I think. <laughs> we'll see. But when you pair them up next to these bright, fresh plants, they look a little sad. But we've got yellow ranunculus and then the sweet violas right here that just kind of play off the same colors that we used up in the window box. And then I did pop, I had four packs of lettuce, so just one of the cells of lettuce in between each flower, just to add a little bit of extra fluff. And those will get beautiful and round. They'll kind of look like an ornamental cabbage in a way. So we'll walk over to this side. You can see we removed the pillows. I am in the market now for some bright spring pillows. I thought I had some, but I don't have four. 
I'd like to put one on either side of the bunny pillow on both benches. So something maybe like blue, purple, or bright yellow, or a mix of all three, we'll see. And this is just a repeat of the same plants we used on the other side. I do think we have time to plant up the kitchen window box, but I'm gonna go take care of some watering chores first in the greenhouse before it gets too late. Even though it's uh, cool out here, it heats up so much in there and dries stuff out pretty quick. So I'm gonna go get that done, then we will plant up some more flowers. window box is planted and the cart has been cleared and ready for something new. I love how this window box turned out. It just looks like a spring garden all in one container. Look at all of these beautiful flowers. And not everything is in bloom yet either. Like the hyacinths are budded but not blooming yet. And then these little daffs are just budded and they're all over the place. So we've got little daffs tucked in here. There's a hyacinth. There's a little lettuce again. We've got these sweet little violas, and then the dark colored ones, I love that. A Little bit of the saxifrage, and then the ranunculus right there. And it's a repeat of all of those things. So I ended up using five lemon cypress. I intended on only using three, but I think five filled it in really nicely. I think three would have maybe looked a little bit too sparse. And this one right here, I had sitting out in the full sun and it wasn't used to it, so it's a little bit sad. But I gave it water, it should perk back up here pretty quick and these were all in the greenhouse. And the fun part about arrangements like this is that I used a lot of things that can be reused. So all the bulbs, daffodils, hyacinths, can be planted out in the garden when we're done. Ranunculus, we can save their corms or bulbs. I can't remember what you call them, but anyway, we save all the rest of ours anyway, so we'll just put them in with the rest. Lemon cypress can stay in for the summer or we'll just pot them up as individual, like individually potted lemon cypress, or we'll use them in another arrangement. Saxifrage is a perennial, we'll plant it out in the garden. So really the only things, which they are perennial, the violas right here, we could plant these out uh, and then they should come back next year, but they don't really like our heat. So they're a little bit harder to site in the garden, but we could still do it. And then this, I cleared all the containers, everything off of it clearly, and wiped it down just roughly, but I will do a deeper clean and then we'll create some sort of a spring display here. And uh, on another day, we will pick up and plant the rest of these window boxes. So we have six left, one six footer, four three footers, and one two footer. And that's one of the more time consuming parts of projects like these is the cleanup, making sure everything is put back. I have a whole bunch of things to put away and that doesn't always happen, especially in the summertime. Oh, by the end of summer. I mean, you guys have seen the state of our barn, like what it looks like inside and back behind it. It just gets to be a mess. And I always have, you know, lofty plans and goals of, you know, when I start doing projects in the spring, I'm going to put everything away right when I'm done. But you know, my mom just showed up just now with a warm plate of cookies. So, you know, I'm not going to go put that stuff away we're going to go out to the greenhouse have a coffee and cookies and we're going to talk garden plans so that's actually why i'm not planting the rest i probably had time to do a couple more but we're going to go hang out for a little while so anyway all that said let me talk about care real quick so as far as temperatures go typically i don't worry about plants like this when the temperatures are consistently above freezing all of these are cold hardy they're tough plants um, they don't need extra protection however we do have one or two nights in the 20s coming up i'll put some harvest guard over the top of these planters they'll be totally fine sometimes the plants will look a little like oh like a little sad in the morning but they pick right back up usually by midday they are watered in today and then I probably won't need to water them for five days, six days, something like that, maybe even a week. And then as it gets warmer, we'll water more frequently. I fertilize less in the spring than I do in the summer. So about every two weeks as opposed to weekly. All of these plants though, they're blooming plants and we want to keep them happy and full of nutrients. So uh, every other week is usually a, a good schedule for us. Other than that, it's just going to be fun to watch all of these things grow. 
I'm so excited about it. Last year we did yellow and blue here uh, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited though to have a different color palette here and move the yellow and blue kind of to a different area. It's just fun to do different stuff every spring. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. We have lots more planting videos coming your way. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.